Hi, and welcome back. In this video, we're talking about horizontal and vertical intercepts of functions. So as a comment, we're going to practice these mostly with linear functions, but anything we talk about also applies to other functions. So we say that a horizontal intercept occurs where a function intersects the horizontal axis. Then similarly, we say that a vertical intercept occurs where the function intersects the vertical axis. So let's talk a little bit more about these. So for a horizontal intercept, if we have our x and y axes and some sort of line, this is where we're crossing that x axis, our horizontal axis. So if we were going to identify the horizontal intercept, we would write this as x equals a value. So we would indicate the x value where it intersects that axis, or we could write this as a point, which would correspond to some x value as our input and then zero as the output. So more specifically, horizontal intercepts occur where the function has an output of zero. You can see that we go over some x amount, but we don't go up or down any value. So our output is just zero. This means in order to identify horizontal intercepts, what we would do is set the output of the function equal to zero. So f of x equal to zero, and then we would solve for the x value that makes that true. Then the last thing I want to note is that a function could have zero, one, or many horizontal intercepts. So here this line has one horizontal intercept, but the line could also be horizontal, and a horizontal line would have zero horizontal intercepts, it doesn't intersect at all. Or if we had a different type of function, it could intersect the horizontal or the x-axis multiple times. So functions can have multiple horizontal intercepts, or it could have none at all, or it could just have one. All right, now let's repeat this for vertical intercepts. So here on our graph, this is the point that intersects the vertical or the y axis. If we were going to write what this point was, we could say that this was f of x equals some value. So that's the output value where it intersects that vertical axis. If y is our output, we could just say y equals, or we could write each of these as a point. So we would have zero as the input, and then we would have f of x as the output, so zero f of x, or we would have zero y where y was the output. So specifically, vertical intercepts have an input of zero. So we don't have any left or right movement, we're just at zero on the x, and then it is intersecting somewhere on the y. So vertical intercepts occur specifically where the function has an input of zero, meaning we can substitute in x equals zero, so zero for x, and then simplify. So we would have f of zero equals, we substitute the zero in for x, and then we would simplify to get our solution. Then the last thing I wanna mention is that a function can only have zero or one vertical intercepts. So here in our line, we're seeing one vertical intercept. We could also have a different looking function that actually has no vertical intercepts, but we are not able to have multiple vertical intercepts. So you could imagine here, if I drew a graph that had many y intercepts, it is no longer a function, so it fails the vertical line test. That input of zero has multiple outputs. So functions are only able to have zero or one vertical intercepts. All right, so let's try these concepts out with some examples. First, I want us to just identify the horizontal and vertical intercepts using the graphs of each of the functions. So we'll look at two graphs here. One is a linear function and one is not but let's start with the linear function. So for the horizontal intercepts, we wanna look at where the output is zero. So that's where f of x is equal to zero. Graphically, we can just look at the x-axis and find the point that it intersects. I'm seeing that this happens at x equals six, which we would then label as the point six, zero. So you could write x equals six as your solution or six equals zero, they're both fine by me. Okay, then for the vertical intercept, this is where our input value x is zero. And so graphically, I see that the line intersects at y equals negative four. So I could write y equals negative four, or I could write it as the point zero negative four. So graphically, it's as simple as that. We just have to find where the function is crossing these axes and then label them appropriately. 
Let's try this again on our other graph. So again, the horizontal intercepts are where the output, here the graph is g, so where g of x is equal to zero. And in this case, we have multiple solutions, multiple horizontal intercepts. So I'm seeing that at x equals negative three, negative one, and one, I intersect the x-axis. So we could write our solution that way, or we could label the points individually. So negative three, zero, negative one, zero, and one, zero. But the noteworthy part here is that the output is zero, and then we just have different x values that provide that intercept. Okay, now the vertical intercepts. So these are where the input or the x value is zero. I can see that this happens at y equals negative two, which corresponds to the point zero, negative two. So there we go. Again, with the graphs, it's not too bad. We can just look at the x and y axes and identify where the graph is intersecting those axes. All right, so we're gonna do one more example, this time doing something more algebraic with the function notation. So let's find the horizontal and vertical intercepts of f of x equals negative 3 fourths x plus seven. So this time I'm gonna start with the vertical intercepts because I think this is slightly easier, but we'll just go through what's going to happen first. So the vertical intercepts occur at zero y, specifically they occur where a input or the x value is zero. So we're going to let x equal zero and then find f of zero, the corresponding output. The horizontal intercept on the other hand has an output of zero. So we're looking for the x value that provides an output of zero. This means we set the function equal to zero and solve for x. So just to point out a little nuance here, when we find the vertical intercepts, we're just substituting in a value. And so this is actually an expression that we are simplifying. So a mathematical expression doesn't really have an equal sign. You might write equal signs as you're doing the work to indicate the next step, but there isn't like two sides of the equal signs that you're manipulating. So we're just taking our expression and plugging in zero and then simplifying. However, when we find the horizontal intercepts, we're actually taking our function and setting it equal to something. So we're creating an equation. And then in this equation, we can manipulate both sides to solve for x. So you'll see that when we do this, it looks different depending on if we're doing the vertical or horizontal intercept, and that's just fine. And to help you with some language, that's because the vertical intercept is us simplifying an expression, while the horizontal intercept is us solving an equation. All right, we don't need to know that in order to do this. I just wanted to provide a little commentary, so let's get into the math. For the vertical intercept, we're going to substitute in zero for x. So we're looking at f of zero, and this means we replace x with zero, and we have negative 3 fourths times zero plus seven. And now I just need to simplify. So anything times zero is zero, and so I'm just left with a zero plus seven, and zero plus seven is just seven. So here, seven is my vertical intercept, or I could write it as the point. Zero, seven is the vertical intercept. All right, now let's do the horizontal intercept. Here we're taking our function, our negative three x plus seven, and we're setting it equal to zero. So we take our function, set it equal to zero, and now we have this equation that we're manipulating both the sides of to solve for x. So you can do this in different ways. I'll walk through the steps. I'll try to explain them as I go, but if you have any clarifying questions you'd like, you can leave them as a comment. Okay, so I'm going to first get the 3 fourths x over to the other side. So I'm going to add it over to the right hand side. I don't really like that there's a negative on it, so I'm personally going to add it over in order to get rid of that negative. So now I have 7 is equal to 3 fourths x. Then I'm trying to isolate x to solve for x. And so I'm going to multiply both sides by the reciprocal in order to isolate x. So this looks like multiplying 4 thirds times 7 and 4 thirds times 3 fourths x. So the reciprocal is where I swap the numerator and the denominator. And when I do this multiplication, these two fractions simplify to be 1. So I have 4 thirds times 7 is equal to x. You could do this other ways by moving the 4 over and then dividing by 3. There's lots of other ways. This is just the way I am doing it. Okay, so now we just need to simplify. I'm gonna do four times seven, that's 28, and then I have 28 over three. 
So x is 28 over 3, meaning 28 over 3 comma 0 is our horizontal intercept. Also, if you prefer, you could write this as a decimal, or you could even do a mixed fraction if you really like. I try to leave my fractions this way, but this is 9 and 1 third, so you could have that written as well. Okay, so just to conclude, I want to graph this line and make sure everything looks good. So I went into Desmos and graphed this. Here is our line. It's y equals negative 3 fourths x plus 7. We're seeing that plus 7 corresponds to our vertical intercept at 0, 7. And then you can see here we're crossing that horizontal axis at 9 and 1 third, which is 28 over 3. And then the y value is 0. And there we go. All right, so that is how we find horizontal and vertical intercepts, especially with linear functions. Thanks so much for watching, and I will talk to you in the next one.